As you can see the male in the center there, he is just spotless. The males in this species grow so large that they eventually will not fit into the shells. Sporting behavior, trying to, he's got, he's got a female in, the, in his actual pit there. He's getting very excited about it. G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, we're gonna be doing my November 2022 fish room update tour. So let's get straight into it. Now obviously I haven't made any fish room related content for a number of months but I wanted to give you guys an update on what's happening in the fish room because a lot has changed since the last time you saw it. So the first tank getting an update this month is my Lamprologus Ocelotus Gold Tank. Now, uh, you guys would have seen that I had a breeding trio about a year and a bit ago, and I was breeding uh, these guys in pretty large quantities uh, from that breeding trio. I had obviously one male and two females, and they were pumping out fry for me, which was great. Unfortunately, that trio died within the space of a month uh, I realized after why they possibly died, and that's because I moved in a breeding pair of Neolamprologus Leilupi into a tank next door to them. They could see the Leilupi through the glass, and that stressed them out. That's what I think happened, and they all passed away, unfortunately, within the span of a month. No other fish got sick in the fish room, and uh, they actually had fry with them, which survived. So now I'm trying to breed them again because I really love the Lamprologus Ocelatus Gold. They've got quite a character. As you can see, one of the males there is pretty uh, aggressively attacking some of the fish and showing them who's boss in this tank. And I'm trying to get at least a pair to form. I've got six in this aquarium at the moment. So I have thought that there was some spawning activity in this tank, but I, I'm not sure. As the days go by, you see shells moved around. You think this, they may have spawned in some of those shells and then all of a sudden they're completely buried. Yesterday, a lot of these shells were open and now the majority of them are buried. So tomorrow there might be more open again. So uh, as the days go by, things really do change in this tank. So I've tried to pick out at least two males and four females from uh, the stock I had left, my best ones obviously, try and breed the best quality stock I can. Unfortunately, there's not many of these guys around at the moment, don't know what's happened, uh, and the ones that are around are extremely expensive. So hopefully I can start pumping them out again and bring that price down for everyone to uh, have some Lamprologus Ocelatus Gold in their life, because these guys, again, have an amazing character uh, and beautiful coloration. You've got, the, got that gold body and uh, purple, blue iridescence down the side of their bodies as well, which is kind of rare in the Tanganyika world to have such colorful fish. Uh, my old breeding pair, the male would uh, separate the two females from fighting each other. The two females that I had would fight with each other and the male would break up those fights, send one to one shell at one end of the aquarium and send the other female to the other end of the aquarium to her shell. And he would always break up those fights. It was quite interesting and funny to watch. So um, I'm hoping to see that activity in this aquarium soon. I'm hoping to see that play out uh, and we'll see how these uh, six go. Eventually I'll have to pull out the excess uh, Ocelotus skull from this aquarium that I haven't paired off with any of the males. So uh, we'll see how that goes. But uh, so far, these guys have been in here for about almost a month. So I'm hoping to see some spawning activity over the next few weeks. As you can see, uh, the guys are sorting out who's boss still. And hopefully, yeah, we'll get to see some spawning activity soon. Anyway, on to the next aquarium. And the next tank getting an update this month is this one. And it houses my newly acquired Neolamprologus curiorus. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that second name correctly. These guys look very similar to Neolamprologus brevis sunspot, but they aren't. These guys grow quite a lot larger than brevis and a lot bulkier. They also have that forked tail, and these guys are a shell dweller from Lake Tanganyika. You see, these shells are a lot larger than what you saw in the previous tank with the Lamprologus ocelatus gold, and that's so I can try and get the males to fit in the shells. The males in this species grow so large that they eventually will not fit into the shells. Females will be the only fish of the pair that could get in the shell, and the male fertilizes the eggs from outside the shell. I haven't seen much breeding activity in this aquarium yet. I'm not sure um, if I've got any females. I know I've got definitely one male, uh, the largest fish you see here on the right. I could possibly have two, but I'm, I'm not sure again. So there are four areas for the guys to have shells. There's a couple of shells behind the rockwork which you can't see, and I just do that so the aggression is spread. I am actually thinking about putting other fish in this aquarium temporarily, and you'll see why in another tank that I'll show you shortly. So these guys here, yeah, not much has happened. They've done a little bit of digging, but I haven't really seen any spawning activity. And I won these guys in the Cichlid Club raffle a few months back, but they're doing quite well. They have put on a lot of size uh, since I've had them. And I actually think the largest one that I've got 
It's pretty much almost doubled in size since I got them. So fast growers, these guys. But anyway, on to the next tank. And this tank has my black Altalampralogus calvus in it. I've got four fish in here, and I know I have at least one breeding pair in this aquarium because they've produced uh, a number of batches of fry for me. And they are the reason why I might be putting some fish with the Coriurus. Uh, these guys have spawned in this aquarium again. Uh, normally, when I put in the shell that the female black Altalampralogus calvus breeds in, uh, which is this shell here, uh, ton shell, these are called ton shells. Uh, when I place that in the aquarium, she knows exactly what that's for. And within the week of placing that shell in the aquarium, she has spawned in that shell. And uh, it's always surprised me how quickly she does that. They could be in the aquarium, just like this, with some terracotta pots and some slate in the aquarium for months, together with the male, not doing anything. The moment I put that shell in, a week later they spawn. But anyway, they have spawned in this aquarium without a shell. Uh, I have seen wiggling fry on the left of this aquarium underneath the terracotta pot. Uh, the actual female who is looking after the fry is now on the right side of the aquarium, so I'm not sure what's happening uh, with the fry, uh, but I'm going to have to move these uh, black calves out of here. Again, thinking about putting them with the Coriurus. They should be fine together, I think, and then I'll catch the fry out of here, but we'll see. I'm not sure how uh, the fry are going. They're in a very awkward spot of the tank to see, and I actually saw a clump of ex eggs get kicked out the other day from underneath that piece of slate that is uh, buried under the sand uh, on the left there. So I'm again, not sure how that spawn is going, but I did see wriggling fry yesterday. I'm not even sure if they're still there, if the mother ate them or if she's moved them to where she is now on the right hand side of the aquarium. Uh, I was going through a length of time of trying to give that female a good rest uh, because she had a really serious fight with the male and uh, her lip actually got torn off and it's never fully recovered. And I didn't want her to go through that ordeal all over again just to give me some fry. So I was trying to get them to rest and uh, not stress about raising a clutch of fry and um, defending that clutch of fry from the other two calves you see in this aquarium. But again, I'm not too concerned with this tank. We'll see what happens. If the calves fry are in this aquarium, I'll just move them into another grow out tank and uh, happy days, everything should be sweet. But anyway guys, let's go to another aquarium. And this aquarium houses my original breeding pair of Neolamprologus Lelupi. You can see the amount of fry they have in this aquarium. Uh, and they're quite large. They're actually pushing, the largest ones are pushing the one inch mark. And they're also uh, developing that yellow coloration that Leilupi have, even at this size, this small size, which is great to see. Now I really need to pull these fry out, put them in their own grey out aquarium and let the parents be so they can spawn again, because they are ready to go. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to show you guys the size that Leilupi can be at when they start to develop their color. Now you can see there's some algae on the sides of the aquarium. Uh, that's beneficial to the Leilupi. You can see some of them are hugging the sides of the aquarium and they just pick at that algae throughout the day. Obviously you can't rely on the algae as their sole food source. You do have to supplement it with other foods that you feed the parents. These guys, I don't feed them anything special now because they are at a size where they can eat the same size food that the parents are eating. But on the left side at the back of the aquarium, the female is ready to spawn again. They are showing courtship signs. Uh, that they want to spawn. So I'm gonna have to get these fry out of here quick smart and put them in their own grow out aquarium. But unfortunately, I'm gonna have to pull out all the rocks and that's gonna kind of disrupt this courtship behavior and the bond between the Leilupi breeding pair, but it will form again. I've done that numerous times where I'll have to take the rocks out to catch a fry, put them in the grow out tank, and the bond breaks between the pair, but it will um, reform within three to four days usually. It isn't a strong bond, it is, I would call it a weak bond, but it does reform. So all is okay. If you do have Leilupi and you need to do that, don't stress, the bond will form again. And I'm confident in saying that because this isn't my only breeding pair in the, in the fish room. I've got another breeding pair of Neolamprologus Leilupi, which I'm gonna show you in a moment. And they're actually going through a breakup period right now. And um, I'm confident they will get back together again. Anyway, I'll show you this other breeding pair and what stage they are at. And this is my other Neolamprologus Leilupi breeding pair. So you can see the male in the center there. He is just spotless. Uh, there is no black markings on him and he's completely yellow, almost orange. See the female at the front of the tank here. Uh, he's not happy with her at the moment because like I said with my other breeding pair, this pair, when they spawn, the female unfortunately doesn't really identify her current brood as a threat to the new eggs that she's just laid. And uh, because the fry is so small, uh, even at this small size, they're able to eat eggs as she's spawning. And these guys are about three weeks old here. 
And what has happened here is the fry have gotten to the new spawn. I suspect the male thinks the female has eaten the eggs and he has subsequently bashed up and uh, they're broken up. That's what happens with my other breeding pair. It's happening with this one as, as well. So I suspect it would happen to the majority of lay loopy that are out there. Uh, that's, that, that's the behavior that they would exhibit for you as well. You might get lucky and, and won't have that behavior. You might have the parents protect the new spawn uh, from the older generation of fry and that older generation of fry won't attack the newer spawn. Uh, unfortunately, with both my breeding pairs, that's the behavior I've seen. But anyway, I just want to show you guys the difference in coloration here. The male of the four lay I have here, this male is the most intensely colored, just incredible. And again, you can see I've left algae on the sides of these aquariums. You see the fry are hugging the sides of the aquariums where the algae is and picking at it. So again, leave some algae in the aquarium for the fry to pick at. So with these guys, I do feed them baby brine shrimp and soak pellets, pellets that are soaked in aquarium water for about 10 or 20 minutes. I suck them up with a syringe that kind of mushes them up and inject it back into the aquarium. And then they've got basically powdered pellet that's very soft for them to eat. And I'm ex expecting in the next day or two that this bond will form again with this breeding pair. And anyway, onto the next tank. Now, unfortunately, I didn't turn my microphone on for this portion of the video. So I'm gonna have to do the commentary again. But uh, I wanted to show you guys this aquarium uh, because basically it's my Lake Tanganyikan community aquarium now. Uh, this tank is four foot long by two foot wide by two foot deep and it's actually on the smaller side for these guys. But I don't have a lot of large tanks in my fish room. I do have three five foot aquariums that are one foot deep by about 45 centimeters wide, but I'm using them purely for a grow out. Uh, so, and, and these tanks are taller and wider for uh, these fish. So I'm using these at the moment. But the fish that I wanted to show you guys in particular in this aquarium are my Thirsty Fur Risha. Uh, they're starting to exhibit their breeding behavior. And I do believe I've actually got out of the five, two males and three females. So an ideal ratio there. And you can see uh, the two males are basically staying on the separate sides of the aquarium in this footage and they're trying to coax the females to their uh, sand pits. And I'm really pleased uh, with the males at the moment. They're starting to color up and it's starting to exhibit their adult color. Uh, every day I walk into the fish room and I'm noticing pretty much that uh, the color is intensifying on a daily basis. So I can't wait to see once they fully mature how colorful they are going to be. Uh, I first started noticing that they were getting that blue uh, green color on the sides of their bodies. A couple of weeks back uh, when the light hit them just right that looked stunning but um and, and that still happens obviously but it's happening more frequently now because the color is intensifying it's just incredible and you can see there that main dominant male exhibiting that uh spawning behavior trying to, he's got he's got a female in the in his actual pit there he's getting very excited about it and uh trying to get her to spawn now with these guys i have actually spawned uh them twice already in this tank and uh i just wanted to see how the females would go in the aquarium uh, would they be able to hold their mouth broods full term or would they eat them? And uh, unfortunately, they did eat them after a number of days. They didn't even last a week. And I do, however, believe it wasn't basically because of their lack of maturity. They are still quite juvenile. Uh, they haven't ma uh, fully matured into adults and they're nowhere near it yet. I think it was because of the harassment from the two males in the aquarium, just constantly getting chased around the tank all day long, stressed them out and they ate their broods. So next time I've learned from that mistake, next time I'm going to put them in their own holding aquarium straight away and uh, let them uh, relax in those holding aquariums and just see how long they hold the mouth broods for. I personally don't like to strip uh, mouth breeding cichlids of their brood. I, I rather the parents raise the young and I believe the young will uh, be stronger for that and uh, potentially pass on that instinct, that strong maternal instinct to hold the mouth brood full term. Uh, but we'll see how we go with these. Um, I'm not in a massive rush to breed them. Of course, I would have loved to breed breed off them already, but um, they're, they're, like I said, they're still uh, going through their juvenile stage and turning into adults. And uh, I want them to learn how to be good parents. So I'm going to let them uh, go full term with the mouth broods, see how long they go for, see how well they do with the mouth broods, but in separate tanks. Uh, so they're not getting stressed out by the males and uh, see how see how well they go then so can they hold the mouth broods for uh, full term or do they take a, a couple goes just to get the idea of what they're meant to do with their spawns it is quite an ordeal i suppose for those females because they're basically not going to eat for about a month 
Uh, they might feed off baby brine shrimp. I had my ventralis chotika females doing that. They would feed off baby brine shrimp while they were holding. That maybe these guys might do a similar thing. In saying that, I was able to keep the ventralis chotika with the male uh, for about two to three weeks. So, and there were multiple males in the aquarium, uh, and she would hold, or the females in that in in the tank would hold uh, pretty much full term. And I'd basically take her out after three or four weeks, and then she would uh, raise the clutch of fry in a grow out tank by herself and uh, but with these guys it didn't even last a week so we'll see that's why I left them in here that's why I left those females in here because of my past experience with ventralis tritica I was able to go three to four weeks uh, with the females in the tank with the males uh, but with unfortunately with these guys it didn't happen so uh, lesson learned with that but again I'm not in a massive rush to, to, to breed off these guys um, and they've got a lot of uh, growing to do. They're nowhere near full size or full coloration. So, But I really am enjoying watching the color develop on these males. However, the other fish in this aquarium, uh, you can see I've got some gold compressor seps in here. Uh, I've purchased another four. Uh, you can see my original two, they've got a very nice gold coloration. The four new ones are pretty much cr a cream color. Uh, and two of the larger of the four that I nearly purchased are pretty much jet black. So I'm hoping um, once these guys settle in this aquarium over the course of the next few months, put them on some good foods and some color enhancing foods, it will aid them to uh, show their true colors. But also in this aquarium, I've got some Neolamprologus cordopunctatus, a uh, female regani, and I've got my similis. But the main fish in this aquarium are the Fursifer Risha, and the gold compressor seps, hoping to get a pair out of those as well. But yeah, this is the first time you guys are finding out that I purchased four new gold compressor seps, gold Alto Lamprologus compressor seps. Uh, I obviously didn't make a video about, about that. They were in quarantine for a number of weeks, and they've only been in this tank for less than a week, and they're doing quite well. But hopefully we get uh, a pair to form out of the six that I now have, and get some spawning activity from those as well. So there you have it guys, the November 2022 Fish Room Update Tour. Really hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, comment, and consider subscribing to the channel. I really would appreciate it. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. Thanks, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.